James Blunt says he will legally change his name to whatever fans choose, but there's a catch. Singer James Blunt has promised to legally change his name to the most popular suggestion from the public, but there's a catch. The 50-year-old musician vowed that if the re-release of his debut album Back to Bedlam hits number one in the charts, he will change his name by deed poll. In a video message posted on X, Blunt said the album, which features hits like You're Beautiful, Goodbye My Lover and Hi, is being re-released on October 11th to mark its 20th anniversary. I'll let the people decide, Blunt is heard saying in the short video. He adds, but if it doesn't go to number one, I'm not changing my name. Writing alongside the video message, the singer used the hashtag hashtag James Who and asked fans to comment their name suggestions below the post, with the most liked becoming the winner. And fans did not disappoint. Within hours of being posted on Wednesday, it racked up over 800,000 views and more than 2,000 comments. The most liked suggestion at the time of writing was Blunty McBluntface, the exact name the singer said he did not want during an interview on The Chris Moyles Show on Radio X on September 30th. Other popular suggestions included Blames Junt, James Corden, after the presenter and Gavin and Stacey Starr, and Nick Pope, after the Newcastle United and England footballer. Back to Bedlam became one of the best-selling albums of the 2000s in the UK and is 17th on the list of the best-selling in UK chart history, according to the official charts website. His single Your Beautiful reached number one in both the UK and US. Blunt went on to release a further seven albums. The latest was Who We Used To Be, in 2023. As part of the anniversary album, the singer is embarking on a tour across the UK and Europe, playing London's The O2 Arena on February 16th next year, as well as dates in Belfast, Dublin, Leeds, Glasgow and Manchester. UNICEF reported Naomi Campbell's charity to commission over 2019 fashion event. Naomi Campbell's charity was reported to the Charity Commission by UNICEF over a fashion event in 2019, the humanitarian organization has said. It comes after the supermodel was banned from being a charity trustee for five years last week, following an inquiry that concluded only a small proportion of money raised by fashion for relief went to good causes. After the findings were made public by the Charity Commission, Campbell said she was extremely concerned that she was not in control of the charity and that an investigation on her part was underway. Fashion for Relief was dissolved and removed from the Register of Charities earlier this year. Now, humanitarian organization UNICEF has said it did make a report to the Charity Commission over a star-studded event held during London Fashion Week in 2019. According to The Guardian, in a brochure for the event on a page displaying the UNICEF logo, Fashion for Relief said funds raised would support UNICEF's efforts to provide the essential interventions to protect, save lives and ensure the rights of all children, everywhere. UNICEF has said it never held any partnership with Fashion for Relief and did not receive any funds from the show. In a statement, a spokesperson for UNICEF said, We take fundraising compliance very seriously and UNICEF UK reported Fashion for Relief 2019 to the Charity Commission, as per our statutory requirements. We have never held any official partnership with Fashion for Relief and we have never received any funds from the 2019 event. An official ambassadorial role with UNICEF comes after many years of commitment and support, the spokesperson added. Details on the Fashion for Relief website say proceeds went to the Mayor's Fund for London. Campbell was discovered as a schoolgirl, and she went on to become the first black British model to appear on the cover of British Vogue. The 54-year-old welcomed her second child, a son, last year, following a daughter born in 2021. Diego Maradona's remains can be moved, court in Argentina rules. The remains of Diego Maradona are to be reburied in a new location after the plans were approved by a court in Argentina. 
It comes after the football legend was laid to rest in a private cemetery following his death in November 2020. However, the star's children announced last year they wanted to move Maradona's remains to a public mausoleum so that fans could pay their respects in person. A court in San Isidro, in the outskirts of Buenos Aires, authorized the proposals at a hearing for humanitarian and emotional reasons. The court added that Maradona's five children should decide when the removal would happen. Maradona's remains are currently buried at the Jardin de Bella Vista Cemetery, which is about 31 miles northwest of the capital. Under the plans, the star's body will be moved to a new mausoleum named the M10 Memorial in Buenos Aires's upscale neighborhood of Porta Madero. The site is currently under construction. Dalma Maradona, one of the star's daughters, said, We always knew that his place was with people but we also understood that all the security guarantees were a priority. What we want is for those who love him to be able to go and show him their love, leave him some daisies. The star, who helped win the World Cup for his country in 1986 and led Napoli to Italy's league title in 1987, died at the age of 60. Eight people, including doctors and nurses, are due to stand trial for their alleged responsibility in his death from heart failure. Fashion designer Jean Pallant reunited with Long Lost Garment after charity shop find. A British fashion designer has been reunited with a piece that went missing almost 40 years ago after the garment was found in a charity shop. Jean Pallant said she was over the moon when she was told the one-of-a-kind orange coat had turned up in a donation bag at the Oxfam store in Mill Hill, northwest London. Shop manager Marina Ikibachwe made the discovery among high street fashion clothes and said she could immediately tell the garment was a priceless item. Ms. Pallant, who was part of the 1960s Cultural Revolution and designed clothes with her husband Martin, who died recently, said she was very excited by the find. I was absolutely over the moon, really. It was very sweet of the person who discovered it to believe that it was something important, she said. It's like seeing a child. It's lovely. I know every single square inch of it, and I'm absolutely amazed that it looks so new, and it feels new. Everything about it looks exactly as it did when it went missing. She made the coat, which has large, round dark buttons, on her kitchen table in 1988 and it featured in a Sunday Telegraph article that year. But she felt sick to discover the garment had gone missing, along with five other pieces which have still not been found, when she went to retrieve some clothes from her warehouse nearly four decades ago. When we retrieved them all, there were these pieces which I remember, of course, because they're all my babies. These pieces were missing, and there's nothing I can do about it, she said. I'd love those to turn up. There are some really special pieces that I'd like back in our collection for our archive. Maybe they'll turn up, who knows? One of them was a piece which is so important to us, which was made in 1972 I think. It was worn by me in a TV fashion show to celebrate Britain joining the common market and it was a beautiful white jumpsuit and jacket with little mink spots on it. The coat was chosen by 60s fashion model Penelope Tree to walk in Oxfam style for change fashion show, in partnership with Vint, as part of its second-hand September campaign. Ms. Pallant is restoring and curating a Pallant collection to give to the V&A Museum in London. Mount Everest is getting taller, now scientists think they know why. Mount Everest has grown by around 15 to 50 meters in the last 89,000 years, and it's increasing every year. Now, scientists say that's because the mountain's water system captured a river. When the Arun River joined with another nearby river, the new path created the deep Arun Gorge near Everest. Now, the river network about 46 miles from the mountain is carving away at the substantial gorge, causing the nearby mountain to rise up by as much as 2 millimeters a year. 
Mount Everest is a remarkable mountain of myth and legend and it's still growing, said PhD student Adam Smith of UCL Earth Sciences, who co-authored the report. Our research shows that as the nearby river system cuts deeper, the loss of material is causing the mountain to spring further upwards. The tallest mountain on Earth, Mount Everest is 8,849 meters high and rises about 250 meters above the next tallest peak in the Himalayas. Today, the Arun River, and the gorge it has created, runs through the mountainous region to the east of Everest and merges downstream with the larger Koshi River system. Adventurers heading to Everest's famous base camp will often cross parts of the Koshi on their route. Over millennia, the river Arun has washed away billions of tons of earth and sediment along its banks, creating the deep gorge. As the huge amount of sediment has been moved away, the land has become lighter and the Earth's crust has pushed up slowly, leading to Everest's growth spurt it's a process called isostatic rebound, write the study's authors. The huge amount of upwards pressure under the crust of the Earth in that area now slightly outweighs the downwards force of gravity. Everest's towering height has led to the interesting river system in the area, according to the report's co-author Dr. Jean Jen Dai at UCL Earth Sciences. The upstream Arun River flows east at high altitude with a flat valley, he said. It then abruptly turns south as the Koshi River, dropping in elevation and becoming steeper. This unique topography, indicative of an unsteady state, likely relates to Everest's extreme height. The growth spurt is not unique to Everest and also affects neighboring mountains including Lhotse and Mukalu, the world's fourth and fifth highest peaks respectively. Comet last seen in Stone Age set to be seen across night sky. A comet that was last seen when Neanderthals roamed the Earth is about to make an appearance again as it swings through orbit towards us. The A3 comet is described as the most impressive comet of the year by the Royal Greenwich Observatory and should be visible to the naked eye if the conditions are right. The comet, also known as C-2023A3, Sachin Chinatlas, Atlas, was discovered in January 2023 and visits the inner solar system roughly every 80,000 years. It comes from the Oort cloud, a huge shell that surrounds our solar system. NASA describes the Oort cloud as a big, thick-walled bubble made of icy pieces of space debris the size of mountains and sometimes larger. It's thought that most long-period comets, like the A3 comet, come from the Oort cloud. It orbits the sun in an elongated path and gets very close to our star. That means there is a risk it falls apart as it orbits past the sun, meaning we would not see anything when it comes back around past Earth. People in the southern hemisphere and some near the equator have already spotted the A3 comet, which shows it was in a good condition when it zipped past Earth on its way to the sun. When it comes back around, the Northern Hemisphere will get a better chance to spot the comet. The best time to spot the A3 comet here in the Northern Hemisphere will be between the 12th and the 30th of October if you look to the west just after sunset, according to the Royal Greenwich Observatory. Although good weather conditions should make the comet visible to the naked eye, a pair of binoculars or a telescope will help get a better view.